Jesus and the answer is yes. Impossible for my God to do with God. Jesus is listening and he hears your every prayer. Shake off discouragement and give the Lord your cares. Impossible for my God to do with God. got to do with God. In Jesus Believe in the name of Jesus. This power has not been impossible. With God. Nothing at all. the God of all possibilities. Impossible for my God to do. Oh, there is nothing at all. And there are times in life when the challenges of life make situation look dark and bearing, and all hope seems gone. At such a time, you need the God of all possibility, who can turn your situation around, turn your night to day, and give you beauty in the place of ashes. And that is the essence of this month's crusade, titled "The God." of all possibilities and i'm glad to let you know that we have a man of god who is directly connected with heaven who knows the mind of god and represents god rightly in our generation he is pastor dr william Komoye. he's here with us to declare the counsel of god to your life to my life He's going to be here shortly as this crusade kick starts. But before he comes up, it is my pleasure to present to you the music minister for this month who has been with us before, who has ministered to us before. He enjoyed what he saw and gladly he's back here with us in our means to be a blessing to us again. 
join me to welcome our guest music minister, Paul Baloch. Hey, hey, hello friends. Hello friends, we meet again. What a blessing, what an honor to be with you today. And blessed to, to minister alongside Pastor Kumoyi and to be with you. And as we begin to lift our hearts again, as we continue to lift our hearts in worship and praise, I'm reminded of Psalm 95. It says, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and let's bless him with music and song. So maybe I'm gonna ask you to put your hands together, kind of like this. Let's do that together. Put our hands like this. One, two, three. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hearts are strength to face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away washed away Hosanna Hosanna you are the God who saves us worthy of all
him here in this place, in our midst, and in our hearts. If, if you want, put your hand over your heart and say, Lord, I welcome you here. I welcome you here in my life, in my relationships, and your children or your family, if that applies to you. Let's just welcome the Lord in our lives in every way that we can. Let's just say, God, come and have your way in me have your way in me, Lord. And we come to you with a thankful heart, Lord. We do. We come to you just reminding ourselves of the blessings in our life. So, uh, so we come to you with a thankful heart, God. Truly. Mm, come before you today thankful heart. Let's sing together. I come before you today And there's just one thing that I want to say Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord For all you've given to me Things that I cannot see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I bless your name and thank Just wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. For all you've done in my life. For all you've done in my life. took my darkness and gave me your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, you took my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed all my song of praise with an outstretched arm I'll bless your name and thank you Lord I just want to thank you Lord oh thank you Lord I just want to thank you Lord thank you Lord Lord, 
Again, if you want to applaud the Lord, let's do that. Let's lift up. Let's applaud him and give him thanks. It is good. It is good to praise the Lord. The Bible says, now Psalm 92 says, it is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name. Almost high. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing, friends. We are giving thanks and making music to our God. He has been good. I was sitting at the piano in our little church in Texas many years ago, and I just had these two words came to mind, just the, the phrase, above all. And I thought, what, what, what could you say to the Lord, or what could you say about the Lord with just those two words, above all? And I started thinking, Lord, you're, you're above all the things that we think are a big deal. You're above all powers. You're above all philosophy and wisdom and money and treasure and all the seven wonders of the world. Like, you're above all those things. There. So that's how this song began, just a simple prayer. So if you know this. I walked into this meeting this evening. I came in as Emmanuel Umar, the Honorable Commissioner. Little did I know that God, who is the God of all possibilities, is going to change my status. Isn't that a miracle? Now I've been addressed as the representative of His Excellency, see? the governor of Niger State. What an honor from my father in heaven. What a privilege that God has given unto me. What a privilege and a greater one that we have our father in the Lord, our daddy, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui in our state. We want to thank God for his blessings that even in our midst, our mother, who has been supporting our father, she's here. Mama, you are welcome once again to Ninja State. I want to specially acknowledge our father, a mentor, a man who has tirelessly served this state and nation, I'm referring to my father, Professor Jerry Ghana. Thank you for always encouraging the brethren in Niger State and Nigeria. I acknowledge the presence of our former Deputy Governor, His Excellency, Dr. Shane Nuzagbai. Thank you for being a blessing to the body of Christ. I will also acknowledge the chairman of Khan Niger State, who is ably represented here by the immediate past chairman, my father, our mentor, a man who God has used mightily in this state to promote Christ and Christ alone with your team. Thank you very much, sir, for all that the Lord is using you to do. I will read the speech of His Excellency, the governor of Niger State. I feel highly elated and honored to join my Christian brethren, especially the faithful adherent of the Christian faith worldwide here in the city of Mina, Ninja State in North Central Nigeria to this special crusade program. I, on behalf of my government, the peace-loving people of Ninja State feel very honored for your choice of our state to anchor a massive global program of this nature as your alpha location.
Your decision to hold a program like this in our state, despite the negative media reports of perverting security challenges in our parts of the world, stands you out among many religious leaders as a true man of faith endowed with godly power and authority. Over the years, I personally have known you as a true man of God. I believe we all will testify to that. Filled with humility, integrity, and unadulterated truth about the world and mind of our great and mighty God. You are really a rare gem among many of your contemporaries in our nation today, and indeed, the whole world. It is on this wise that when I was informed of your coming to our state, I made up my mind to personally come to this program to physically express the solidarity of the government and people of Niger State to you. And your efforts in trying to free our present world from the shackles of sin, corruption, greed, insecurity, poverty, sickness, and diseases. I join my faith with you and your team in your fight for the freedom of humanity through your well-known teachings on holiness of life and character, peaceful coexistence, and religious tolerance. Moreover, Pastor, your concern for our youth through the Youth Impact Academy aspects of this campaign makes the entire program very unique. The policy trust of our government is to support individuals to be self-reliant, vibrant, and nation builders who will hold our nation higher in the global arena even after we leave the stage. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing in this our collective vision for our youth. I urge you, Pastor, to use your wealth of religion knowledge and experience to continue to promote the much-desired peace, religious tolerance, and security as you have always done anywhere you go in our land. The people of Niger State are hospitable, accommodating, peace-loving, and tolerant to all faiths. And that is why I have determined, in spite of my tight office schedule, to act out time to personally join the entire Christian community in our state to welcome a great man of faith as we all know you. Your Lordship, sir, I must respectfully request that you pray earnestly for a lasting peace, security, and prosperity of our dear state. On a final note, on behalf of all the people of Niger State, I welcome our beloved pastor, teacher, mentor, father, pastor, Dr. W.F. Kumui to our state, the power state of Nigeria. The largest in land mass, like the Bablu Kulkena land, a state flowing with milk and honey in terms of both natural and human resources. Thank you for honoring our state and projecting us to the whole world through this program. And by the special grace of God, this program is situated at the city gate. The gate of the land has been opened to you. Speak the truth of God to this land. Psalm 107 verse 9 says, For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon us. May the Lord give us great peace. And may he answer all of us. Thank you. Amen. Put your hand together. The land is open unto us. Amen. I say amen. Global amen. Thank you. God bless you. And wait for the blessing you have been waiting for. The miracle will come your way tonight in Jesus' name. Remember, our central planning committee chairman said 
The first miracle, you have a seat to sit down. Secondly, I want to say another wonderful miracle that there is no rain today to disturb you. That is the power of God of all possibility. Can I hear amen? amen? Now, we have come to the reason why we are here. And for that reason, I will read a portion of the Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 9. I read in verse 6, which says, And he said unto them, unto him, Behold, now there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. All that he says come to pass. Now, let us go thither. By the venture, he can show us our way that we shall go. Can I hear amen? amen? Here we have the man of God, an honorable man of God, with the word of God in his mouth. The lover of humanity sacrifice all to reach out to souls everywhere they are. That's why he's here in Niger State. Humble servant of God, like his master, the Lord Jesus Christ. Genius in secular world of mathematics, here with us, an administrator, a mentor, faith builder, Jesus over the whole world, and our big daddy. Amen. Here today, we have in our midst to minister to us the word of life, this appointed man of God, anointed man of God, is here to reach you with the word from the God of all possibilities. We now stand up to welcome our dear father, Pastor Dr. W.F. Komwe. You are welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Niger State, are you there? Let me hear the beautiful voice of Niger State. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you. The Lord visit you. And visit all our locations. And the Lord do great, mighty miracles in every life tonight. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We worship you and exalt you. We know you are great. We do all things are possible. And we're asking tonight that you'll touch every heart. Every life, Amen. every family, Amen. and truly today will never be the same again. Amen. Confirm the power of your word and the authority of the name of our Lord in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, as we begin the series of miracle working sessions, as we consider the God of all possibilities, tonight I'm bringing to you a message from Mark chapter 10, reading from verse 26. Mark 10. Verse 26, and they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? What a question in the heart of the disciples, of the people surrounding Jesus Christ. Who then can be saved? What a question we have as we consider our individual conditions, who then 
can be saved, who then can be delivered, who then can be healed, who then can be lifted up, taken away from where we were to where we ought to be. And the Lord Jesus gave an answer in verse 27. And Jesus looking upon them says, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible in your life. In everyone here tonight, with God all things are possible. For those online, for everyone connected, everyone watching, everyone expecting from God, whatever your challenge, whatever your difficulties, the Lord Jesus Christ has assured us, assured you, with God, all things are possible. That's why tonight, I come talking to you on the great possibilities of the grace of Jesus. The great possibilities of the grace of Jesus. I'll briefly consider three things. Number one, the gracious, number one, the great grace of Jesus for our full salvation. Salvation, full. Salvation for your soul, for your spirit, for your body, salvation, your redemption, total redemption, complete redemption that the grace of God brings to us. And the grace of God is available for everyone. So I don't have to say, I don't have enough of that. I don't have enough of that. The grace of God available for you. And tonight, that grace will come upon your life. And it will give you salvation full salvation, free salvation, it will impact your life, impact your soul, impact everything about you from now unto eternity in Jesus' name. Number two, is the gracious goodness of Jesus healing our fatal sicknesses, sicknesses that are fatal, sicknesses that appear final, sicknesses that appear incurable. Tonight, healing is coming to you. And it's through his grace, gracious goodness of Jesus, healing our fatal sicknesses. Number three, the glorious gospel of Jesus for all freedom seekers. Freedom seekers. What does that mean? Those who are seeking for freedom. Freedom from whatever attack. Whatever yoke, whatever problem, whatever predicament, whatever problem you have, freedom seekers, what you are looking for, you have it here tonight. The glorious gospel of Jesus for all freedom seekers. Look at number one. Number one is the grace of Jesus, the great grace of Jesus, the grace that covers you and covers me, the grace that covers everyone here tonight, everyone listening, the grace that covers everything you cannot handle by yourself. That grace is here tonight, that great grace that covers all sin, that cleanses all sin, that forgives all sin, that takes you away from every bondage of sin and gives you freedom from that that binds you and then leads you in the freedom of the salvation of the Lord, that grace coming from Jesus for a full salvation. In John chapter 1, reading from verse 12, it talks about what this grace does. It says, but as many as received him. To the people tonight, who oh, say, yes, Lord, I'm here. I know you came and you were looking for me. I know you died for me. I know that you have 
take in all the shackles, all the shame, everything concerning my sin, concerning my shame, concerning all the difficulties I have and the impossibilities of my life. I know you died for me, and as many as received him, that's what he's looking for tonight. You receive him, you open your heart. You say, Lord, I know you came to bless me. You didn't come to condemn me. You didn't come to crucify me. You didn't come to judge me. You didn't come to punish me. You came to save me. And because I know you are going to do something eternal, something everlastingly unforgettable in my life, I open my heart to you and I receive you. And as many as do that, there's no discrimination. The Lord is not going to push you away saying, no, you are not qualified because nobody qualifies for his grace. That's why the grace of God abounds for everyone and it is for you tonight. Heaven is smiling at you, on you. That whatever you ask tonight, as you want, is salvation, free salvation. You want a salvation, full salvation. Tonight is your night. Say, tonight is my night. To them give you power privilege to become the sons of God. Can you imagine what it means to be a son of God, child of Adam, child of weakness, child of sinfulness with a sinful nature for me to become son of God, daughter of God. That's what you are talking about. It is not by marriage. As many as received him, as you receive him tonight, you become a child of God. Where is the child of God there? It will happen in your life. It says as many as received him, to them he gave power to become, to become, to become, to become. That means you were not like that before. You were in darkness. You are in sinfulness, you are in evil, you are, you are a person that had no claim on God. But then as you receive him, Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer, you become, I will become. I can't hear you. Tonight you'll become in Jesus' name. You'll become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name to them that believe on his name look at verse 13 in verse 13 which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God it says this one does not depend on the will of man. Somebody says, no, I don't want you to become a child of God. It doesn't depend on him. Somebody says, no, you're not going to have full salvation. It doesn't depend on her. It depends only on the will of God. And the will of God for you tonight is that you will be saved. And the will of God will cancel the will of Satan in your life. The will of God will cancel the will of any man or woman contrary to your progress, contrary to your salvation. The will of God will cancel that tonight in your life in Jesus' name. Because it says we're born not by blood, not by flesh, not by the normal creation, procreation of man and woman. This one is coming from heaven. Nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And then it says in verse 14, look at verse 14, and the word was made flesh, talking about Jesus, and he dwelt among us and would be held is glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. Somebody shout, full of grace. Full of grace. Say it aloud. Full of 
as the rivers are full of water, he is full of grace and truth. You can come and take your beach out of the water, it's still full. You can come and take whatever quantity you want of the grace of God. The grace of God is still full, overflowing for you tonight. I can just see you as you come and you say, yes, I need that grace of God. And no matter who you are, whoever comes, no one will be rejected. The grace for salvation and the grace for full salvation and the grace to help you, lift you up and make you the man, the woman God created you to be. Tonight is that night it will happen. And then in verse 16, he tells us, and of his fullness have we all received? Of his fullness have we all received? That does it. He tells us the grace is full tonight. And the grace is available tonight. And of that fullness of the grace of God, that will overlook all your sins, that will forgive all your sins, that will give you salvation, that will give you the joy of salvation, that will give you the great possibilities of the grace of God available tonight and of his fullness have we all received. And grace for grace. Grace for grace. For you there, grace for grace. After you get the initial deposit of the grace of God tonight, every time you have a challenge that will appear to make the salvation shaky, grace will come again. Grace will come again. And all your way, all your life, whatever it is you are looking for, the grace will say, I'm still here. And his treasure is still full of grace. The grace of God will never stop in your life. You have the initial thing today and then you move on. You have grace for grace. Look at Titus chapter 2. We're looking at what that grace does now. Anywhere that grace comes. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. You know, some people sometimes, they come to visit you, but they come empty-handed. They don't hand over anything to you. They just say, I came to appear to you. I came to visit you. Okay, what have you brought? I just want to say hello. But you know, grace is not like that. The grace of God bringeth salvation. And the grace of God visiting you tonight is going to bring salvation to your life. Forgiveness to your life, freedom to your life, and the joy of salvation and the peace that comes with salvation is going to bring to your life tonight in Jesus' name. Because it says, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, all people. All women, all boys and girls over there, over there, yes, over there and over there. Everywhere you are and you are connected tonight, the grace of God will not pass you by. The salvation of God will not pass you by. Because the grace that bringeth in the continuous tense, keeps on bringing, keeps on bringing, and keeps on bringing. That grace that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. Praise God, it has appeared to me. It has come to me. And that grace will not allow you to be lost. That grace will not allow you to perish. That grace will not allow you to suffer, even here or on the other side. That grace will appear to you tonight. Look at, look at verse 12. It says in verse 12, teaching us, we need 
teaching. We need that still, small voice every time saying, now you have grace, now you have become a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God. Put your foot there, put your foot there. Don't say that. Say this way. Don't go that way. Go this way. That grace of God will be your companion, your teacher from now on, all through your life in Jesus' name. You see, when we are not taught, we fall into pit, into pits, into ditches, into here and there. We hurt ourselves. The grace of God will prevent you from going into places that will destroy your life because that grace of God that has appeared unto all men is now teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world. In this present world, your life will shine. Your life will be bright and your life will be straightforward. You'll be righteous and sober and godly in Jesus' name. Let me come to number two now. Number two is the gracious goodness of Jesus healing our fatal sicknesses. The gracious goodness of Jesus, that goodness is coming your way. Hey, look at this verse of scripture, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. When Christ comes to you, he comes in the power of the Holy Ghost. And that power of the Holy Ghost will destroy every work of the devil in your life. Tonight. I said tonight. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth of the Holy Ghost and with power now. Every anointing that anyone receives from the Father has a purpose. When Moses received the anointing, he had a purpose, and Joshua had a purpose, and Elijah or Elisha had a purpose, and when David was anointed, it had a purpose. When Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, he had a purpose and that purpose is to do something in your life in my life in my family in all the people around me what's the purpose it says who went about doing good he went about doing good and as you come across Jesus tonight he will do good in your life he went about doing good, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because he has not changed, he went about doing good, and is going about tonight. He will get to you there. As we mentioned the name of Jesus, he willed you. What he went about doing at that time, he will do it tonight in your life. What was he doing? Healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He was anointed of the Holy Ghost. Then he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. You see here tonight? Is see going around to get you tonight? Is see going to heal you tonight? That's what he has also done. And what he has always done, he will do in your life. I remember one brother, his name, Joseph. He had had this problem for 10 
long years. Some people will say he had the problem for 10 good years. Uh -uh. He had the problem for 10 bad, terrible, painful years. But as he came, like you have come tonight, and then Jesus touched him, like he will touch you tonight. Uh, let me invite him to tell you the story by himself. Joseph, thank you. Come. Thank you, Daddy Kumi, for giving me this opportunity to share my testimony. My name is Joseph Jato Longji. I'm so grateful for the GTK that have been going on. I key into the last triumphant power that comes up in Ondo State, and I was having a challenge of about 10 years. I've been to the doctor and he said it's post-trait enlargement. I've been urinating more than 13 times, more than 10 times in the night. But on the 25th, the first day of the Crusade, I listened through satellite in Jaws. Pastor Daddy Kumuyi said we should put our hands on where the hand the hand the hand the hand the problem. Once you mention the name of Jesus, your problem will clear out of the way. I did that and went home throughout that night. I couldn't go out for urination. I couldn't do anything, but at five o'clock, I wake up, I urinate. Throughout the day, there is no urination. From that day up to this moment, I've not been having that challenge again. I'm no longer urinating frequently as before. I'm so grateful to God for this global crusade with Kumuyi. My prayer for Pastor Dewey Kumuyi is that he will keep on uh, carrying on this global crusade so that others will also be able to benefit from this. Amen. What God did for him and for many others tonight, he will do for you. Long-standing problem will vanish away. Pain, sickness, suffering by the touch of Jesus Christ through his gracious goodness, healing everyone with fatal sicknesses. The Lord will do it for you tonight. Amen. 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 How am I sure that he will do it for you tonight? Look at Psalm 145, Psalm 145, verse 9. In Psalm 145, verse 9, the Lord is good to all. You didn't say amen to that one. All. All, everyone, every man, every woman, every family, no matter where you are coming from, no matter who you are, the Lord is good to all. Just like Jesus Christ manifested the goodness of the Lord and healed everyone oppressed of the devil because it's good. He never said no to anyone. He never rejected anyone. And tonight, the Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works he created you and because he created you he has tender mercy for you he knows where you're suffering he knows where you ache he knows where the problem is he knows where the pain is and the lord will show his tender mercy of forgiveness of healing of deliverance he'll show it to you tonight in jesus name Look at verse 19. Verse 19, he will fulfill the desire of them 
that fear him. The people that fear him, that, that's not a fear of uh, if I use a club to smash my head, is the filial fear, is the honoring fear, that fear seem to honor him, that fear seem to respect him. He says he will fulfill the desire of everyone that honors him, loves him, comes to him, looks up to him, and says, in you is my salvation, in you is my healing, in you is my deliverance. He, the God of heaven, will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry. Amen. He will hear your cry. He will hear your voice. He will hear your petition. He will hear your prayer and will save them. And will save them. And will save them. Let's look at number three here. Number three, the glorious gospel of Jesus for all freedom seekers. You're seeking freedom. Freedom from sin. Freedom from bad habits. Freedom from anything that will injure or destroy your life. A freedom seeker. You want to be free from every bondage. I'm free from every attack. I'm free from every affliction. Freedom seekers. You want to be free from the judgment of your past sins. You want to be free from the eternal judgment that comes upon the people who dishonor God, disobey God, disrespect God. Freedom seekers. As you seek the freedom tonight, your freedom has come. Your salvation has come. Your healing has come. And the yoke in your life is broken. Look at the word of God. It says in Acts chapter 14, and I'm reading from verse 7. Acts chapter 14, verse 7, and there they preached the gospel. There they preach the good news, the glad tidings. There they preach the gospel. And look at verse 8. And there sat a certain man at Lystra. Like you're sitting there tonight. Like you're waiting there tonight. He was waiting. He was sitting. And he heard the good news. What's the good news? That God loves you. What's the good news? That God will not allow you to perish. What's the good news? That he offers free salvation, full salvation unto you. What's the good news? That whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved and forgiven and set free and be healed. What's the good news? The good news is this day is this word of life fulfilled in your heart. There such a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple, from his mother's womb, who never had watch, sick, impotent, paralyzed, helpless, hopeless, he never had watch. And then he heard the gospel that the apostles brought. Verse 9, in verse 9, the same heard Paul speak, just like you are hearing. And what you are hearing will turn to miracle in your life. Yeah. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. He just looked at him like I'm seeing you there today. Like you're seeing me there today. And once we connect, we don't have to have a physical touch. I don't have to come there and put my hands on you because...